Video Productions. All right, everybody, welcome. Yes, I know, I'm not a big fan of these magnets either, but for all your mechanical bull and western prop rental needs, go to SilverAutoRanch.com. Anyway, today we will be working on this 97 7.3 OBS truck. We're just going to be doing some uh, quad gauge pillar install. Uh, you've probably seen this uh, half a dozen times by now. So what we're going to show you is just some things that go wrong. Um, some of the issues that people have doing this. Got my professional tool bag here. UFC is real as it gets. Do they even say that anymore? They used to. It's an old bag. Uh, these are some of the tools that you will need for this project. Um, keys, very important. Camera bag. Um, so yeah, uh, this is my dad's truck and uh, it needs a lot of work as you can see. Um, we're going to start, this is going to be a complete project. We're going to do a whole bunch of stuff to this truck. So if you like this truck, you like work on this stuff, uh, stick around, like and subscribe because we're um, definitely going to be doing a lot of work on this. But first we got to just get this whole gauges in here so that we can monitor everything. One of the next things we're doing is we're actually going to change out this transmission. Uh, we got an ATS stage one transmission on the way. Um, I'm not going to do that install just because of the warranty stuff. Uh, we're going to take it to a shop that can get all our, the proper stuff so we can get our warranty valid and everything because that's more important than anything. But uh, the rest of the work we should be doing. So um, yeah, this truck needs to get cleaned too. Maybe we'll even show a video on how to clean your truck. Alright guys, stay tuned. So like the true professionals that we are, I'm going to do this in order according to the uh, instructions they have provided for us. And I will have my uh, apprentice, my apprentice technician right here. I'm going to have my apprentice technician perform all these tasks. And I will show you exactly how and what he's doing. All right, my apprentice right technician is going to be cutting this map line right here with some snips. All right. Oh, that was the wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, now we're going to connect this tube fitting here with the provided hose clamps. Do not drop the hose clamps. It will be very difficult to find. The search will go on. Uh, that must happen to you all the time. It never <laughs> happened to me once. <laughs> no lubrication required. Just some, just some elbow grease. Maybe lubrication required? <laughs> Look at that professional stance right there, guys. That's how you do it. That's how you do it right Back there. Professional. Alright, <clears throat> just so you guys know, this is a map line, this is an air line for the turbo. This is going to become the uh, turbo boost gauge. Is it going to angle that one? I want to make sure it's angled the right uh, way. You want to angle, yeah, yeah, just like that. No, 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 aim it towards, like, up there. kind of like, I can't, this line right here. Yeah, yeah just like that, okay. just like that. Perfect. Alright, guys. Alright, once we got that line in, just gonna route it up over this firewall or on the firewall, run it over to here, and then uh, we'll get back to that later when we're doing the gauges. All right, everybody, just want to show you what, what we're dealing with here. Got all these, all these tools being used right here. Shop vac, very important. Very important to have a shop vac. Now everything is in complete disarray. So let's go over here, show you guys what we have done. I've already showed you this boost line fitting. It's not really no uh, kind of not really wired up yet, but it's kind of in place. And then right here, that's where your Schrader valve is for your ah, it'll focus. Oh, it wants to focus on the wrong point. Uh, right here, this is your new um, fuel pressure sensor gauge. We've got that. Um, tightened up with a 22 millimeter wrench it's everything's kind of just routed over there but not been properly dressed we'll head over here under the truck so if you're right here this is our wrench for all your western prop needs you're going right here on the driver's side right there that is where your trans temp sensor is going to go. We got Mike 
over. Mike over here doing the gonna do the wiring for that. And I'm telling you, I don't know what this camera focuses on, but it's not the center. There we go. Got Mike gonna wire that up right there. Over here. Oop, shit. That's where we uh, tap the, the header, the exhaust manifold. Let me show you. Got some anti seize on there. We wired that up to the front. Uh, pretty much no real issues. I mean, that was uh, nerve wracking always because you could screw that up pretty easy. But went pretty well. Same thing here. Just gotta find the right, find the right bolt hole and drop it. Some transmission fluid will drop, so make sure to already have that uh, Teflon taped up so that you can fit it in uh, pretty quick, so you don't lose a lot of transmission fluid. And uh, yeah, Schrader valve didn't want to come off. Ah. Schrader valve did not want to come off up here with the wrench, so I ended up using uh, channel locks. So. Good thing we're not putting it back because it's kind of screwed up but yeah time consuming but uh pretty pretty smooth so far so uh yeah we'll be back you guys like that you don't have a real shop unless you have a mannequin big old titties in it all right see guys right here there is a not really a grommet it's like a piece of plastic got a hole we're gonna drill a hole right in the middle of it and then uh, we're gonna put the wires through there and kind of seal it up with some electrical tape. That's how we're gonna run all these wires into the cab of the truck. This is where that grommet feeds in from the inside the firewall. It's not really a grommet like I said before it's a piece of plastic we drilled a hole through it and all these wires pretty much uh, kind of seal it. Uh, we might might add some sealant to it uh, when we're done, but for right now I want to leave it open because we need need some slack. But yeah, all this stuff's pretty much out of the way. It's behind your pedals. This isn't automatic, so only got the two. Right, yes, sir. All right, everybody, we're out here. Make sure you got your phone charger. That's very important. You might have some important phone calls coming in, and uh, we're gonna splice all these wires together using. Uh, Probably using these. Pink, my favorite color. And yeah, and you can see on here, these are like pre, like the wire, the wires cut. So you just gotta pull it off. That's that's handy. These are our holes we cut. Eh, 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 eh. All right, Mike, do the honors. He's gonna hit me with it. That's what he's gonna do after I say <laughs> Oh, look at that. Look how clean that looks. <laughs> Would you look at it? This wire is gonna have to go with this black wire. Because technically it's black. Right. Yes, black is black. Black. Color word blacken. Well, actually, I'm gonna paint your great pants blue. <laughs> This is what it's gonna look like, folks, when you're done. Right here. <laughs> it's just finished product, man. Finished product. Yeah, just wires everywhere. Got a little light over there. Oh, you know what? Actually, hold on. Alright, now we're done. We're getting out of the truck. Alright, all done. <laughs> all done. This is what it looks like, folks. <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, we use these little, my favorite color, pink butt connectors to get the yellow, yellow. You know, red, red, black, black, all that stuff. Now we're gonna actually connect the sensors into the uh, back of the gauges and uh, do some wire management here for sure. And uh, well, we'll get back to you. I'm just cleaning up the wires, pulling on the slack down. Uh, this yeah. is good wire management, folks. All the sensors, uh, fuel pressure. You, you got the fuel pressure one in there, right? Not the fuel pressure, the uh, boost one. Oh man, I forgot about that. <laughs> forgot. Exactly. 
All right, so yeah, um, all lines running through this side, and then everything plugged in. Got beautiful zip tie work right here. Oh, not, not so much right there, but you know. Yeah. It's actually, he's, sp he's it's learning. It's, he's uh, learning. <laughs> so. Yeah, that one. <laughs> that one right there. Don't worry about that one right there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is, uh, the most tedious, annoying crap of this whole job is doing this right here. Ain't that right, Mike? Where you at? Oh, yeah. Where's it? Where, where, you, you guys get it. All right, guys. There's something I want to show you guys um, that, with my turbo gauge. So I wasn't getting a good reading from the turbo gauge. And one thing I uh, had to go back and look at was this is my original ferrule fitting. I know the focus isn't going to do a whole lot of good here. This is the little part of the coupling for it. And then um, this is the old uh, air hose for the uh, for the turbo gauge. Now, um, and of course, it's going to focus on my hand instead of the, the hose because it's ridiculous like that. But Okay, so it's finally focused. Alright, so this is the ferrule fitting. Uh, I bored this out. I actually got a drill bit and bored this out because now, as you can see, the ferrule fitting actually fits over the hose, right? I can actually like move it, slide it up and down a little bit. The reason I'm showing you guys this is because uh, originally it, it would only go about this far. That's as far as the hose would go into the ferrule fitting and I think that's why I wasn't getting a good reading. I contacted Glowshift, I told them the issue, they sent me out a new hose, I've already installed it so I can't show you, but basically on the new hose, the hose is exactly the same as this, the, the ferrule fitting is uh, bored out a little bit more. This one, like like I said, this one was actually more closed than it is, I just, uh, I got a drill, one eighth drill bit and bored it out, so that could work for you, if that's an issue you're having, you could bore it out and once you do that, it you know, it can feed further into it so on both ends one end it feeds further into the gauge on the other end it feeds more into that T fitting that goes into the map line to get uh, air so once I did that and I replaced both um, now it gets now it gets a good reading so uh, if that's an issue for you um, that's if you're not getting a good reading uh, that could be a problem right there so I just wanted to add that in so I contacted them customer service was great and they uh, replaced it and now it works. All right, so moving on. So uh, we have the expanded circuits here going to, this is fuse, I believe this is fuse eight, which I think is like keyless entry, um, lights, uh, door locks, things like that. That is uh, all, an always on, always hot fuse. And then this one here is fuse 11, which is ignition on which is like I think your radio and uh, so you get two fuses one basically replaces the original fuse and one is the additional fuse for the gauges themselves so don't forget when doing that you have to actually put two fuses in and again focus and uh, so yeah so two fuses in both 15 amp fuses uh, this is your uh, red wire and this is your yellow wire yellow wire is in 8 red wire is in uh, 11 so you can look those up. Those are the fuse numbers. And then we have it grounded right here. None of this has been wire managed yet. We'll get to that next, but there's your ground. So that's all up. And then, uh, yeah, I'll show you guys these things uh, working. All right, oh, they're doing that crazy computer thing in the camera. <laughs> uh, they don't flash in, uh, in real life or something. Oh, there it goes. It looks stable there. Uh, it's just the frame rate, I guess. Let's see if we can get it to stop. I think it's getting worse actually. So we get back, it still looks like that. Yeah. Well, wow, it's cool. They look like they're doing it at different rates. <laughs> no, so they don't they don't flash at all. I'll just uh, I'll just take a picture so you guys can see what they actually look like. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah. Well, they're all working too. Everything's accurate. Uh, fuel pressure. We noticed fuel pressure is really bad. Uh, fuel pressure is like at 32. Oh, there it goes. Now it's not flashing. 
So yeah, fuel pressure is 32, super low. I uh, also noticed there's a fuel leak at the pump. Uh, I'm not that familiar with this truck. This is my dad's truck, so I just started messing with it. Um, it's got a, a lot of problems, steering problems, all kinds of other stuff. So a lot of work has to be done to this, but uh, the fuel, we have to attend to that pretty soon. Um, he's completely replacing his transmission. He's putting in an ATS stage one transmission. So uh, the trans temp does work. I just turned the truck on, but I, I've driven it. It does, it does work. Um, Man, look at that one go. Yeah, boost is good. Uh, boost is crazy low. Uh, I think he wants to replace his turbo, so we're probably gonna replace his turbo. Uh, probably at the same time we do the fuel system just because we're already tearing all that stuff apart, so we'll probably just get to it. And EGTs, you can actually see is like at 200 right now. So, er, yeah, it's about 200. Uh, but I just turned it on, so. Other than that, I mean, gauges work great. Uh, if you like this truck, we're definitely gonna be doing a lot of work to this thing. Um, might get some better footage than this. This is, I mean, everybody's seen these installed a hundred thousand times. So I just wanted to go over what hiccups we have. No real hiccups. I mean, uh, you know, Schrader valve popped off kind of weird because it's in there at a weird angle. But you know, got some channel locks, got it out, put the new sensor in. The uh, turbo thing is just a T-splitter. You know, that's all it is. That that went fine. Same thing with the exhaust manifold. That was a bit tough because we didn't have a real. Uh, we had to use a drill and go real slow to do it, but everything worked great. So no real hiccups, the, the gauges are awesome, they work well, customer service is great, so uh, that's what's to be expected. So I appreciate you guys watching. Again, I'm gonna have several more videos on this truck. It's not my truck, but um, there's gonna be a lot of videos on it. So if you guys like it, like, subscribe, and stick around. So uh, we'll post some more videos up there for you. And drop a comment, what you like, what you think we should do. I mean, I know I'd love to replace this dash, um, but I don't know why dashes are incredibly difficult to find for this truck. So yeah, uh, leave some comments. So until next time guys.